Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So check it out. I'm with a new friend here today. I've got a Lincoln 140 and I just picked this up from Northern Tool. I got a coupon on this bad boy. So I only ended up paying $620 for this machine. Now this is a 120 volt, 140 amp MIG welder. Uh, this will also do flux core if you want, but this is primarily a MIG welding machine. Um, it's a great machine. I'll show you guys why I bought it, what attracted me to it versus the competitors. And let's face it, there are dozens of options if you want a 120 volt MIG welding machine. Um, and why did I choose this one over the others? So if you want to learn about this MIG welding machine, then stay tuned, watch this video, and I'll tell you guys all about it and what I think of it. And I'll show you what's in the box. I'm just going to showcase this welder real quick. This particular welder belongs to my father. This is a Lincoln, same basic model as the one that I just got, but this is a 135, SP135T. And you can't get this model anymore, believe me, I've tried. I want to get the same machine for myself just because this thing has been so reliable and it is a great machine. Um, this is just a 110 machine, or 120 volts as you'd call it. And this takes, you know, just you got to have a really heavy extension cord. You pretty much need a dedicated 20 amp outlet to run this thing. I've learned to weld on this machine. My brother, he's welded a lot with it. My dad's used it. And this thing just keeps coming back for more. I mean, this has been a really good welder. You know, we've converted this thing over to the 11 pound rolls, which is, you know, you get way better deals on those rolls. We've also, you know, we're using Stargon, which is a 75 25 mix. Uh, it's a great little machine. You know, this thing welds up to quarter of an inch. That's all this thing will handle and that's fine. You know, that's basically for what this is. That's perfectly adequate and it's a lightweight machine. It works perfect. So I wanted something like this ultimately so I don't have to keep borrowing my dad's machine. And that's why I went with a Lincoln ultimately because, you know, I've used this thing for years and years and it just keeps working. And I didn't want to buy something that, you know, is going to be phased out over the, you know, next couple years where, you know, you might get something that's new and it's a no name machine and then you can't get parts for it and something happens down the road. And so this way, you know, stick with a brand name that, you know, and you'll never regret it. Even if you spend a little more money, sometimes spending that money is well worth it. Plus the tips, the consumables. Um, everything is readily available. Ultimately, I wanted one of these. They don't make these anymore. So what I went with was the next best thing. The 140. I'm sure a lot of you guys get these catalogs in the mail, this Northern Tool Company. They've been around for a long time. They're pretty good. But anyway, um, this is what I bought. This is what I decided on. Uh, as you can see, sale price $619. Not too bad. Um, there's plenty of options in this magazine, you know, and I, it was a toss-up between the Hobart 140 and the Lincoln. And ultimately, for $50 more, you know, I went with the Lincoln. It's just, I feel like it's a better brand. Plus, there's a few things that I will show you that make it worth that $50 more than the Hobart. So, I'll get into that real quick once I get un unboxing this welder. I do have to point out one thing. Make sure, if you're buying a welder, that it says free shipping because some of these do not have free shipping and you pay a premium for a machine to be shipped to your house, you know, if you do not have free shipping. I mean, some of these machines, you know, some of these things weigh 60, 70 pounds. I mean, look at this one, I, I just bought 63 pounds. The Hobart, 57 pounds. I mean, this one up here, this Hobart 210, that's 94 pounds. I mean, that would probably be a hundred bucks to ship that thing if you were to buy that without free shipping. So just make sure free shipping if you buy one of these machines. Save yourself a lot of money. Not to bore you guys with all kinds of details, but I do want to point out 20% duty cycle at 90 amps. That's pretty good for a 120 volt machine. 30% duty cycle at 130 amps. Now just to point out the Hobart, which is because that's what I was looking at, that has a very comparable duty cycle. Um, so essentially, I mean, they're the same machine. You know, this one has a 20% duty cycle at 90 amps. It doesn't say, you know, 130 amps or not, but I'm sure that it's probably the same. And that basically means, you know, like 20% duty cycle. That means two minutes out of 10 minutes, you can weld at 90 amps. Now, you know, if you're welding steady, that's quite a bit. And I don't, I don't think I've ever really welded for 10 minutes solid or even two minutes solid for that matter. Usually you're tacking and, you know, moving things around. So anyway, long story short, check your duty cycles if you're buying a machine and make sure that it fits your needs. So that's enough of me talking for a while. Let's tear into this box and see what this MIG welder looks like and uh, see what's included. 
in the box with a MIG welder. Okay, so here's the first glimpse inside the box. Looks like you got your paperwork and everything, manual, you know, you got some advertising, all that good stuff. The welder itself, looks like you got a pretty nice stinger. It looks pretty standard for Lincoln stuff. Looks like you have a flex core tip on there. That can be removed and you can put your MIG welding tip on there, or your cone, I should say. Um, looks like that has an external plug, which the old 135 does not, but that is a little different, so you probably couldn't interchange the leads. Oh, let's see. Okay, so this right here is the main reason why I feel like this machine is worth $50 more. A bonded ground clamp. Now, most ground clamps that you get are going to have just contact on one side, and this one has contact on both sides. Of the clamp so that right there in my eyes is a $50 upgrade now I feel like a ground clamp or a work lead is definitely one of the most important things that you can have on a MIG welder don't cheap out and get some of like you know the less expensive you know work leads because they just they don't last this one has a really good spring tension has a really nice strap there that connects the two jaws it looks like it's all brass or copper of some kind so definitely worth Spending the extra money on a machine for that. And this is the other expense that I feel Lincoln did well on. This is a Harris regulator. Now, Harris has been around for a long time. They make, you know, a lot of torch kits and gauges and regulators. Now, the other manufacturers of the ones, you know, like Hobart's and all the other brands that I looked at, they didn't really have a brand. It was just kind of a no-name regulator and it was just kind of like a cheesy ground clamp. For me, just these two upgrades was worth the $50 more I spent on this Lincoln machine than on comparable machines. So it's in the details, guys, whenever you're buying one of these MIG welders, because really the MIG welder itself, yeah, Lincoln, it may be a little better product, maybe not, but it's the accessories that you're gonna be spending the money on. Obviously the welder too, but looks like you got a hose for the, for the bottle. You got a, a ground clamp lead. That all comes in the box. And then the machine itself. Looks like you got a nice heavy cord. What else we got down here? Looks like we got some uh, MIG welding wire, 25,000. And they're probably gonna give you another flux core roll. Yeah, so here's some flux core roll. Uh, probably never use this, but it's there if you wanna try flux core. If you don't have a bottle, you could always start with this. You could always start with this flux core, and that doesn't need any shielding gas to weld. It's just it's kind of a porosity weld. Uh, I don't know. Flux core has its benefits, but I think MIG welding benefits outweigh flux core. Just wanted to show off kind of a cool detail. You know, they went to the extreme of actually printing Lincoln Electric on the cables. I thought that was kind of a cool touch. You know, makes you feel a little better, I guess, about buying a brand name product. But not that it makes any difference as far as the functionality goes, it's just kind of cool. Whoa, that's heavy. Look at that. Nice and shiny. Check it out. Basically the same machine. I like it. Now back here we got some brass connections for the hose, for the Argon or Stargon, whatever you're using. Ooh, this has a latch. See that? The 135 just kind of opened it. There's no latch. All right, looks like you've got the roll adapter so that you can get rid of those little sample rolls and you can run a big boy roll, like an 11 pound roll. And you got some documentation on there on how to set the machine, probably for flux versus MIG welding. I'm imagining that's taken care of down here. And it looks like the drive roll system is actually really good. Got a nice ball bearing on there. It looks like this is a pretty easy setup to change depending on the thickness of wire that you want to run. Very nice. Got a nice little chart there. If you don't know how to set the thing up, it'll give you some you know, landmarks. 
nice i'm happy with that looks pretty good you know nothing really crazy up front you've just got uh four heat settings and you've got your wire feed speeds you know on off switch down here plug in for the stinger and that's brass by the way just want to make note what the gas block is that's kind of cool so a b c and d are your heat settings so kind of primitive on the heat settings but the way i look at it is even without infinite controls you know the engineers at lincoln they probably had all their white lab coats on and they probably had coffee and they probably spent a lot of hours figuring out the best positions for heat that you could get the maximum benefit from the transformer and also the maximum amount of benefit to the the welder you know so i mean these things it's not just like they have random heat settings you know they spend a lot of time figuring out those heat settings and why they're preset you know that's what the engineers do so i'm sure they've been working quite a few hours on trying to figure out that so that doesn't bother me in the very least don't forget about the goodies in the bottom of the box looks like we got some uh, consumables there and the necessary gas diffuser that you're going to need for the MIG gun itself. So, a few goodies in the bottom. That's all there is to it to install that stinger. And just one connection down here. like that she's all ready there's two holes in the bottom of this welder one right here and one up here and I'm gonna mark those out and transfer the mark to the sheet metal on the welding cart and those are gonna be my new mounting holes If anyone's curious, this is Beta Seal U418. This is what we use for the windshields. This stuff is awesome. This is a really useful material. And it hardens like that, and then you can just take the plug out of the end, and you can just start gunning again. Usually we go through two tubes of these for a windshield. They claim this MIG welder weighs about 60 pounds, I believe. So that's kind of heavy. Now we can just put our bolts in. Hopefully everything lines up. Perfect. Sweet. So once that urethane dries, this thing is going to be rock solid. I mean, it's already solid just with those two bolts in there. So happy with that. The door opens and closes just fine. I just wanted to note one thing. According to the manual, right here anyway, it's claiming that uh, the wire drive polarity needs to be positive. So ultimately the short cable that we see right here has to be positive, so it has to be on this terminal. If you're flux core welding, this is set up just right. But because we're gonna be MIG welding, we need to move this cable and hook up this ground to this terminal. Make sure to pull the ground cable through the anti-pull strap there. That's very important. So if you yarn on this ground cable someday and uh, you don't have that hooked up, that could be a really bad day because that could rip some pretty important hardware out of this thing. So that's there to help you. That's there to be your friend. So there it is. That's all there is to making this thing polarity positive. Okay, so we're going to load the wire into this machine. We're going to use a sample wire here just to start out with. This is a 25,000 solid wire. This is for big welding. This machine is kind of set up loosely for flux core welding because they give you 35 thousandths on the drive roller and also they give you a pack of 35 thousandths wire. And they also install in the gun itself, which I just took out, a 35 thousandths tip. So we're going to go over to 25 thousandths. So on the drive roll itself, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is printed 25 thousandths, and that's going to be 
the one that we need. I've already swapped that. Just wanted to show you guys that it is on the opposite side. It says 25 thousandths here, but the small roll is the one that we're actually going to be using. So it's 25 thousandths here. This one says 35 thousandths. So that can be a little bit confusing as to which side. But ultimately, you want this side that says 25 thousandths facing you when you put that on. So that's like that. It's got a keyway. It sits on there nice. All right. All right, let's cut the cord. Cord plug, whatever you want to call that. Awesome. So just for testing purposes, I've got this light duty extension cord hooked up to this. I'm not going to be doing any welding right now. Wow, that's a loud fan. It's got good flow. That should keep the thing cool as you're welding. Awesome. Let's load this thing with wire. Obviously guys, we're gonna shut this machine off while we're loading this thing. So this is the wire. And don't take this, let me just show you. Don't take this out and just let it go because you will have wire everywhere. This thing will just go and unravel itself. See the wire coming out here on the drive roll. I'm going to try to guide that into the sheath. Okay, so now we're there. So now this has to come up. Now, the big deal here is that you want to make this roll have enough tension so that it does not loosen itself up. But you want to have enough drag so that the roll doesn't unravel itself, but also so that whenever you have this machine turned on, which we'll do here in a second. It's going to turn this spool. So watch what happens here. And again, I've taken the tip out so that wire can pass through the sheath. So it looks like that's a pretty good tension. No need to go crazy tight with this either. Some guys will tighten that down super, super tight. You don't really need a lot of tension in there. Now, we're going to put our... This is a gas cone. This directs the argon out of these holes. Whenever you install this, it directs the argon around the nozzle. So now we're pretty much... I just want to use up this wire. I will be replacing this with an 11 pound roll as soon as I empty this wire roll. So here's a really good way to set the tension on your MIG welding roll, your wire roll. So here's a good way to set the tension on your MIG welding wire. So see here, we've got a little bit of bow, but it's not really straight. So what we can do is we can turn this nut. See how it just loosened up and it made more of an arc? The looser we let it go, the more of an arc we're gonna get because that roll is turning. So you kinda of want it just to hold its own tension, just so that that wire doesn't come undone by itself. So once you get that to the point where it's just keeping tension on itself, you're perfect. Whenever you do plug this in with an extension cord, Again, we're just using this just so I can turn this thing on and feed the roll through. I'm gonna get probably a 10 gauge extension cord, something pretty heavy. Um, you're gonna want a nice heavy extension cord just because you're gonna lose amperage with these smaller cords and they heat up quite a bit. You know, you don't want that. So get yourself a nice heavy duty cord, whatever, you know, basically however heavy you can find. This thing's all ready to try out. I've got myself a nice, I got a 12-3 extension cord. So that's going to be fairly heavy. That's I'm not going to lose too much amperage. See that? 
12 3. So that's a nice heavy cord. I borrowed the dad's argon bottle. It's not strapped in there, it's just kind of sitting there just for experimental purposes until I can get to uh, the supply store. Anyways, we've got a nice uh, Polaris Ranger 6x6 here today, and he's having some windshield problems. So, what's going on is that this piece of metal here that holds the windshield strut is all loose and it's come undone from its point. So this windshield frame is really kind of cheesy. It's only bolted on the top here and the only thing that connects it is just that thin little strip of metal that broke and it's come undone. So we're going to try to reinforce this a little bit. Because this is just totally wobbly. You can see down there the other two bolts that hold the bottom in. So this this roof, this cab, came in a box, you know, and it was basically one of those things that you have to assemble. So it was designed to be, you know, lightweight and uh, fit in a box. So don't ask me why they didn't design this a little better, because there's a lot of stress on these struts when you close that windshield. So we're going to make this so it's nice and strong and he'll never have issues with this again and try out the welder at the same time. All right, so this can be the first weld with this machine. Not much of a weld, but a tack weld anyways. So it works, that's good news. That's really thin, cheesy metal to weld with. I wonder why it broke. So that weld wasn't great. That was really hard to get in there to grind the paint to get a really good connection. But anyway, look how much stronger that is just from that one weld. Just to make an extra step, I'm going to weld here, here, and there. And if they ever want to take this thing apart, all they're going to have to do is just grind that weld to remove that piece, but that's going to give it a lot more strength. Awful. It's like the cheesiest metal. I don't like this metal. This is super, super cheesy metal. Every time you touch the weld, or touch it with a welder, it just like falls apart. Whatever. If you just do short little stitches, it seems to work pretty good. You could try dialing back the heat a little bit. This metal is really thin, and even on a low heat setting, it still wants to kind of just destroy the metal. I think it's kind of some cheesy, cheesy metal, but yeah, it's going to hold together really well. It's going to be excellent. Okay, I've got this welded, and the welds aren't as good as they could be with nice, clean metal. But this thing is kind of hard to get this, it's hard to get a good ground on this metal and it's just it's very cheesy, thin, like pop metal. It's kind of hard to weld, but anyway, this thing is all secure now. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to call that fixed. Those three welds right there really add a lot of strength. I don't know why. The way this thing was designed, there was only this little bit of metal holding this whole piece until you get to the bottom. So I've strengthened that quite a bit. And the welds aren't perfect up here because I really couldn't get a grinder in there to clean that up. And this metal, for some reason, just doesn't seem to weld very well. 
I got a big gap there too that I had to I had to overcome. But anyway, I'm gonna call this fixed. That's fine. I'm getting used to the welder. So I'm gonna mess with the flow a little bit of the argon. And I'm also gonna mess with the wire speed, you know, some of the heat settings, and play around with it a little bit. So this is a first real test for that welder, and I've got some other tests I'm gonna go try and get done. And uh, I think that that does pretty good overall. I love that little welder that I've been using. So that's pretty much the same thing, just a little more modern. So it takes quite a bit of force to close that window. I'm really surprised that they just had such a small bracket, lightweight bracket, holding that windshield frame strut. When you get running down a trail, you know, there's a lot of flex going on right there. Finish off this project. Just to keep those from rusting. It's gonna look great. I don't know why they didn't make that happen from the factory. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. Why they didn't at least have like an angle iron piece with a bolt through the front and the side. That would have been a lot better. Oh well, it's improved, it's fixed. All right, so here we are. I got the Lincoln out. I'm gonna test it out some more. This is a PTO bracket that I've got for one of the projects that you'll see in a future video. This is a PTO bracket for a John Deere front mower. Anyway, these holes are all ovaled out. I'm gonna take that MIG welder and fill those in and then grind them down. So that'll be another nice test for this MIG welder. That's got some pretty good heat penetration. That's only on the, the second to highest setting. So you can see I'm just kind of filling that in so I can grind that smooth. It's pretty good. That's two pieces of eighth inch stuck together, so that's about quarter of an inch. The only thing is that fan is pretty loud. It's quite a bit louder than the other one. The 135 that I've got, or Dad's got, Dad's got. All right, that machine does pretty good. So I've got that all welded up. Now I've got to grind and dress up all these holes. But uh, that, I was welding on, uh, what was it, C position, basically the third heat setting. So the second highest from the top, I guess, is probably, I already guess, doesn't really give you an amperage, but it'd probably be around 100 and, I don't know, 100 amps maybe, 120 amps. Anyway, that does pretty good with that metal. I mean, this is really clean metal. I was able to grind that up nice. So I think that welder does pretty darn good. I think that's going to last me a long time, and I'll have that for a good many projects to come. So now that I've got this all welded, I'm going to have to clean up the holes here so I can you know, fit this piece of threaded rod in between. I'm using this Ingersoll die grinder to kind of come in here and clean that all up so it'll be a really nice fit for the adjuster itself once that's all cleaned up and ready to go. This is just a wax that I'm using to help cool the end of this blade here because that thing that generates a lot of heat. And to keep them sharp longer, you got to keep them cool. 
So I got that all done. That was quite a bit of work, more than I was anticipating, to get all these holes rebuilt and reconstructed. That was a lot of work. So ultimately though, what we have now is a really nice fit. That's gonna be a really great product that I can use on that machine without having to spend all kinds of money. So this is how this goes together. This whole assembly slides to tension the belt. So anyway, that's good. Now I just gotta get this thing painted and make a nice shim for this. And we'll be all set. All right guys, so that's fixed. That welder is pretty handy. I think I'm gonna really enjoy using that welder over the years. So I've rebuilt this piece. This can go back on the machine now. This welder here, I really like it. I don't really have anything else to test right now, so that's gonna have to conclude the video. But ultimately, it's a great machine. Highly recommend getting anything Lincoln. They're, they're a great product. They're not helping me out at all. So, you know, this is, this is something I went out of my own way to buy. I paid for this out of my own pocket. It's just, it truly is a great product. So, there it is, guys. There's a video on the whole shebang. Hope you guys enjoy.